Quick guide for 4.3, beta flight, let's go. Okay, so now you have your new stack. In this case, I have the HLRC F740 48 amp ESC. So what do we do? So I'm starting off with my beta flight 4.3 but I want to upgrade to Beta Flight 4.31. So I'm looking up on CLI version, it's HGLRC F722. So now I go into DFU mode, okay? And then Fresh Firmware. So I'm looking for the HGLRC F722 4.31. All right, so you have to load it up, but in some cases, if you can't find it loaded up online, you just choose 4.3, and then you go back to 4.31, and you see there, load firmware online. So now we are flashing. I'm speeding it up so that you don't get bored. All right. So now apply the custom defaults. And then you are just going to just calibrate the accelerometer, even though I don't use it because that's for angle mode. And now we have just set the UARTs. In this case, I have my DJI BTX and then I have my Express LRS controller, so I'm looking up. Okay, where did I connect my DJI? So DJI, I'm using the connector. This is a solder-free connector FC. So I see there, okay, it's on TX4. So I enable MSP on TX4. Basically, it allows the flight controller and the VTX to talk, okay? And then I'm looking up, oh, where did I put my Express LRS? It's the same as using TBS Crossfire. And yep, I'm putting it, I've already put it on TX1. So Serial RX on TX1, I hit save. All right, let's now continue to the next step. All right, so now the setting up receiver. I chose Serial UART1, and now I need to choose a protocol. So it's Crossfire. It's the same for Tracer or Crossfire or Express LRS, okay? And then, because my controller is T-A-E-R, throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder. Okay, so I'm using that. And now, 4.3 is unique because it has presets. I'm using this preset for BMI270 because HLRC has BMI270 on it. If you have MPU6000 or you have ICM20869, you don't have to do this, but for BMI270, you have to do it only for 4.3. So I applied that preset. And now for this one, as you can see, all right, so it's already added in a few filters and it's made sure that the PID loop is at 3.2 kilohertz because that's how the BMI270 works well at. So I'm setting, I need my OSD for my config. I need my LED because I'm gonna add it later. All right, so hit save. All right, so now the basic preset setup, approach with caution. A lot of people will actually say, oh, I upgraded to 4.3, I put in this preset, that preset, but it doesn't work. The preset is made by the pilot for their quad, okay? So in this case, I'm just showing you an example where I pick up a Superfly preset. Yes, I can put in, all right, I can use RPM filtering. I'm using 6S, no GoPro, blah, blah, blah. But my quad and his quad can be different. But I'm gonna, for, just show and tell here, I'm going to show you, I'm gonna apply it anyway. All right, so let's read through what it actually requires and click pick. So then it basically applies the preset. But what you see is it applies all the PID characteristics to my quad, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it fits, but it's okay, we'll apply it first. And now for the RC link, Express RS I'm using on Omambo, so I'm limited to 250 Hertz. So apply 250 hertz and let's pick a uh, freestyle. So that's what I do. All right, and all the necessary, all the necessary options. Okay, all right, let's just do that. All right, and then pick and apply. Okay, I mean, it's great, it's convenient, but at the same time, you really need to know what to do. So if you have IRC Ghost or you have Tracer or you have SBUS, please go ahead and look up this preset tab. Okay, so now for the 48 amp ESC, if you have BL32, you can use the configurator for it. But in this case, I want to use BL Heli S and I'm using BlueJ because that's what the OEM has advised. And according to their Facebook page, we need to use BlueJ with 96K PWM. That basically just means the frequency of how much the ESC talks to the flight controller and the 96K, all right? Okay, so it supposedly makes it smoother. So in this case, I'm just applying the latest of BlueJ flashing for all the ESCs, and then I'm using, I'm choosing 96K. All right, let's go ahead and flash, sped it up so that you don't get bored again. 
blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it goes one by one by one. And you'll see, I've already applied 48 kilohertz because I did it before. I didn't read what the OEM advised. So just make sure you always read the manual, okay? Never just assume. All right, so let's now set up the motors. I'm setting up by the D-Shot. That's how the ESC and FC talks. I'm putting in the direction of the props in reverse because that's how I'm used to. Okay, all right, it's all applied. And then now I'm testing the motors. Okay, testing motor one. All right, motor one turns, no problem. And then let's just go ahead and test all the motors and make sure all the motors are turning in the right direction. In this case, mine is prop out, which is in reverse. Okay, so I'm just filling it in. Just be careful, uh, just in case there's any metal shards that then suddenly shreds your fingers, okay? So now I'm applying the OSD elements. I need my minimum, which is um, the average uh, VBAT and then the current and then my link quality and of course I have warnings so all of this will be able to be displayed on DJI as long as you enable the OSD and config and then you enable in your goggles the I think it's a third party or external OSD can't remember what okay now let's go set the receiver so I've already bound it and because I already chose TAR, it's working, no problem. And then with the modes, I have four modes I set, which is arm, pre-arm, flip over after crash, and then buzzer. Okay, I only need those four switches. So if you need more, up to you. Okay, now, is your gyro on your flight controller working? Go ahead to the sensor tab, right, and then start rolling and flipping. The gyro measures the rate of change, so you need to really be violent a bit and then you'll see it acts on the three axes the XYZ axis the roll pitch and your okay if it's working your gyro is working so don't say your gyro isn't working your gyro is working if it does this let's now set up rates so rates is um, subjective you can do whatever you want the default is about 667 in my case I like in the 900s for the roll and pitch and I leave the your 600 for your right that's my preference because I like to flip and roll, I like to be exact. Okay, but again, from quad to quad, you may need to change it. You can follow mine or you can use yours. Will it all work? The only way to know it works is you have to look at black box. So the black box basically is just like uh, a plane, right? It records all the data when you fly. So now we're setting it up. I need gyro filtered because that's the raw gyro. And then I set about two kilohertz in this case. I'm only given the option, these options. So I'm picking up the closest option, which is 1600 hertz which is about two kilohertz all right so now let's do the test flight when you're testing don't fly around you know far away from you what you need to do is fly close make sure of course it's not too close and then do the 360 rolls pitch and your turns okay and what you're trying to look for is those wobbles at the end you can see that and that's basically bounce back so as i already showed you we applied the presets and why isn't it working? It's because it's not catered to ours, okay? I'll prove to you by actually now, let's access the black box data that we actually have. So like we need to download it first. It actually, uh, so just create a folder and place where the .bbl files should be, okay? You can do exactly how I'm doing right now, just follow through, or you can put it in activate the mass storage version. Basically then it just pop up a window, just like Windows, it detects your quad just like it's a uh, storage USB, okay? All right, so anyway, so you've downloaded the file and then now you need to use Blackbox Log Viewer. Okay, in this case, I've already already pre-set up all my templates. You just need to go to www.theuavtech.com to have the exact templates like I have. But right now, what I'm just trying to show you is all the graphs or the data is here, right? The basics are you need to make sure that the stick commands correspond with the gyro commands. Oh, sorry, the gyro readings. The gyro is just a ruler that measures the rate of change, right? So as long as it measures, that's it. It doesn't do anything else other than give the information to the flight controller and the flight controller uses the PIDs in order to get the movement of the quad as close as possible to the stick movement. But in this case, you can see the purple line showing a little bit of bounce back after I'm actually done with the move, okay? So that is what we're trying to get rid of. In this case, the preset is not doing its job, all right? The gyro is working fine. There's no noise. It's very, very minor fluctuations in the unfiltered version, but the filtered version is all smooth. That's fine because that's what the filters are supposed to do to smoothen it out. So what do you need to do? 
the preset has actually made my quad fly kind of okay but not what's the best it would be. So you can have other choices. For example, you can choose the presets from UAB Tech, but you can tinker by yourself, but really do this only if you know what you're doing. So if you see here, this is what the presets did. So I'm just returning it back to defaults. When it's made default, it's all back to 1.0. So now you can play around with it and increase the D term or reduce as needed but just make sure you're always checking after each flight test the temperature of the motor as so you can hold it as fine. Now go on YouTube, learn as much as you can and I would advise you to learn from Chris Rosser. He's great. So I hope I helped a bunch of you with your build. Just have fun, try it out, go out and fly. So thank you very much for staying right to the end. Like and subscribe.